All right, in this video, we'll be looking at the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas as accessory organs to the digestive system. This does not represent part of the alimentary canal in which the food is traveling, but without these organs, the digestive system would not function. And so just a few things about all three of them at first, and then we'll go over each one individual, uh, just give you a basic overview of the three. Uh, the liver, basically, its function is to produce bile, and bile is a fat emulsifier. Get to that in a second. Gallbladder's chief function is the storage of bile, and the pancreas' chief function is to supply enzymes that are needed to digest the food as it passes into the small intestines and also produces bicarbonate, which neutralizes the stomach acid. So let's look at the liver. Liver is the largest gland in the body, can weigh as much as three pounds, consists of four primary lobes, the right, left, and those two are the easy ones. Then there's the caudate lobe, and then there's the quadrate lobe. And you can see here there's a ligament that's called this falciform ligament that kind of separates the larger right and from the smaller left lobes and also allows the liver to kind of be suspended from the diaphragm and the anterior abdominal wall. The liver produces approximately 900 mill milliliters of bile per day, which is, um, you know, almost a liter of bile per day. That's a lot of bile. Um, it also uh, processes bloodborne nutrients. And so things like glucose that are, that are found in the blood, it stores glucose as glycogen. And uh, it's also used to make proteins that are found in the blood plasma. It can store fat soluble vitamins like um, so there's different vitamins that are, they're not water soluble, meaning they don't dissolve in the blood. And so it can just store those to keep them from being in the body and in the, in the skin and other places. Uh, it performs detoxification functions. And the main detoxification function it serves is converting ammonia to urea. When we break down proteins, we create ammonia, which is NH3, and the liver converts that ammonia into urea, which is then uh, filtered from the kidneys. A little bit more, just showing this in the grand scheme and the uh, kind of the picture of this as it works with the other organs. Uh, the composition of bile is basically it's a yellowish, greenish um, alkaline solution. And it contains what you can see here. It contains bile salts, um, which are made from uh, cholesterol, and they function as a fat emulsifier. And an emulsifier basically allows the fat, the nonpolar fat, to kind of be mixed in with the water so that it can be further digested and absorbed. And it contains a chemical or a pigment called bilirubin which is formed from heme and bilirubin is this, it has this color to it, this yellowish color. And sometimes, you know, if a kid is born with something like jaundice, they have too much of that going on in their system. Uh, the liver is an interesting organ in that it is constantly regenerating and it can regenerate to its full size even after like as much as 80% of it is removed and it can regenerate back up to its full side, even within a year. A um, couple things as far as homeostatic imbalances of the liver. One of the big ones is hepatitis. Um, hepatitis can be formed in se or found in several forms, but is usually from a viral infection. It can um, be brought on, by a simple viral infection. It can also be brought on by like drug and toxic or drug toxicity and some other things. Um, there's a, there's several things in the wild that can actually cause you to have hepatitis, which uh, like wild mushrooms can poison you and give you hepatitis. Hepatitis is just an inflammation of the liver and there are several forms of that. There's also cirrhosis of the liver, which has, is a progressive chronic inflammation of the liver it could be from hepatitis or it usually comes from alcoholism and so uh, cirrhosis is just where the river the liver is just continually de 
deteriorating and liver function goes down, which is never good for a person. And so typically people who have advanced cirrhosis will have to have a liver transplant. A little bit about the gallbladder. The gallbladder is this uh, really thin walled, um, thin muscular kind of organ and it sits up against the ventral surface of the liver. It almost looks like a little bag underneath there. And its main function is to store concentrated bile and uh, or store and concentrate the bile. So once the bile gets in there, it concentrates it by removing the water so that it can store more basically. Um, and then it releases bile through contractions into this bile duct, which releases ultimately into the small intestines. That's pretty much all it does. And this, so you can live without a gallbladder, which a lot of people do. Uh, one of the things that can happen with a gallbladder is something called gallstones. And usually um, this has to do with too much cholesterol and too few bile salts. And so just having an imbalance of chemical imbalance in the liver can cause that to occur. So now looking at the pancreas, we looked at the pancreas in the endocrine system, and so we're mainly going to be focusing on its uh, digestive functions in this video. It is um, located, so so here's where the stomach empties into the small intestines, and so you can picture the stomach kind of right here. The pancreas is like right up underneath the stomach, and it's Exocrine function is to produce pancreatic juice. There's that word again. And it releases this through a duct, which means, I mean, that's by definition is an exocrine kind of function. And you can see how this, the bile duct and the pancreatic duct empty into a common tube there. And so the composition of the pancreatic juice is, um, it's an alkaline solution also, which think about it, the stomach is largely acidic. And so, and, and this alkaline solution helps to neutralize the acidic food coming from the stomach and so that your small intestine is not destroyed. And so most of this alkalinity comes from the chemical bicarbonate, which allows the um, stomach acid to be neutralized and then it just produces water and gas. And so, like, if you drink a big Coke or something like that, this is why you're, you know, expelling that gas is because you, um, it's combining with your pancreatic juices and producing CO2, which you have to get rid of or it will just build up. Um, and then, of course, those liver secretions along with those pancreas secretions are released right into the uh, small intestines, and that is where they combine with the food in order to kind of start their next next stage of digestion, which in the small intestine we're going to get ready to talk about has to do, there's still digestion occurring in the small intestine, but there's a lot of absorption of nutrients also happening in the small intestine.